Today we are learning battlement couching, which is probably my favorite stitch on this entire sampler because it looks so incredibly impressive and yet requires so little effort to create. A perfect combo. Now, I did not invent battlement couching, it's been around for quite a while, but I was unable to find any information on who named it or exactly why it's called this. I can only imagine that it has something to do with the tiny open squares you can leave amidst the many layers of trellis stitches, which somewhat resemble the battlements or tiny windows in a castle tower. We'll begin with a trellis stitch, and really focus on keeping it neat and even with perfect straight lines and square squares in between. If you'd like to fully fill in your space with no little open squares at the end, then you'll want to measure out the distance between your stitches accordingly, leaving only enough space for the number of trellises you plan to layer on top. I tend to wing it a little more and let it go where it wants, but even then you'll want to make sure that you have enough space in the squares for the remaining number of colors you plan to use. With my next color of thread, I'll place a second trellis on top of the first, offsetting it just a little in one direction. In other words, I'll begin by placing my ground threads in the same direction as the original ground threads, but all slightly to one side. Then I'll add the crossing threads, all slightly to one side of the crossing threads on the original trellis. Whatever direction you choose to start shifting the trellises now will be the one you continue to follow through the rest of the stitch. A third color equals a third trellis layer, again starting with the ground thread direction and offsetting just a little more, then adding the crossing threads, offsetting as you go. This method could continue indefinitely, really, especially if you left yourself large enough squares. I usually use at least four or more trellis layers in order to get a really dynamic look, but the total number you use is up to you. You could do this stitch all in one color, but there's hardly any point. It's more commonly used as a way to show a gradient of one color, or a switch from one color to another, which is what I'm doing here with the green fading into blue. You can also just use a bunch of different colors that create a lovely palette, and it will still look awesome because that is the joy of battlement couching. The final touch to this stitch is a bit of trellis couching done in the last color of your palette. You want to place these couching stitches over only the cross points of the very last trellis you stitched, on the diagonal that points into the layers underneath. And that's battlement couching. Incredibly simple, delightfully dynamic. And we're done.